people just get my name. Uh, Fuzzy Zellern, what a name. And his buddy went missing, and they couldn't find him. And two days before he called me, which is typical of my work, I'll have a dream about somebody. And so I dreamed about this guy, and I, I saw Air Force, you know, because I think of it this, this way. The way I define it is Air Force, Army is green. So Air Force is blue, Army is green. Um, Marines are more khaki and green. Navy is blue, but blue, black and white typically. So I defined everything, and I put everything in a compartmental type of situation, and that's how I figure things out. And so this man comes forward, and he goes, I'm right here. And I had to figure out where right here is. And um, he goes, but parts of me are over here. And I thought, what is that? And so that's what you have to do. The, that's the biggest problem with psychics is they realize that you could be hunting for a missing person, but you're picking up five missing persons. So you have to use a term. My favorite term is called show me. And what I do is they sh- say, show me where, like, like let's say we call it um, Walt Disney is missing. <laughs> okay. And I say, okay, show me where Walt Disney is missing in the state of Idaho, um, in the town of um, uh, Smith, and, um, and then here are the date time frames he's gone missing. And same thing like the mountains. Um, I'm doing a cold case right now in New York, 35 years old cold case, and we're very close to the body now. Um, we had to, God, it's been a pain in the neck. But, for example, if I said I'm looking for Mr. Disney, I have to isolate what I'm looking for. So let's say you go grocery shopping, and I call it the grocery list. You go in and you say, I want to buy Johnson's, you know, sausage or bacon, and so you have to go to the bacon aisle, correct? And you say, oh, I want to buy Johnson's. So you're looking for the Johnson's. Well, sometimes Johnson's could be in the freezer section for all I know. So you're looking in two locations. So on my friend Fuzzy Zeller, um, his buddy was apparently, he died. And when he landed, I said, I saw a bush. And I had a dream about this bush just but he jumped up and he goes, I'm right behind this bush. You can't miss me. But you have to go 360 around the bush because if you stand in front of the bush, you're not going to see me. I hope that makes sense. So I tell people what you do is you have to face north when you write up, you want to write up your dream. You, you put on a little compass and you say, I'm facing north. And then Fuzzy, Fuzzy's buddy was on the west side of the bush. But if you stayed on the east side of the bush, you couldn't see him. So there's a lot of detail here that I tell people, if you want to help your career, there are specific questions. If you want to you want to get your dreams to help you get your answers, you have to ask more questions. And on that particular case, I said, two days ago, Fuzzy, I just happened to have a dream about this guy that came to me, and I saw like a leaf. So I said, is he a, a captain or a colonel or something like that? He said, yeah, he was. And I said, a good-looking blonde guy? And he goes, yeah. And I said, oh, my gosh, he's over at this bush. And he goes, your buddy told me that you were, like, six feet from him. He was on the other side of the bush. And he goes, no, that's not possible. I said, I'm telling you, you were right there. And I said, think about it. You made a pause. You found something on the ground. And you looked at it, and you threw it back down. And he goes, I, I, yes, I, I did do that. It was the only time I said, it was the only time that you did that. And he goes, yeah, I did. I did. And I, I said, go back to that location. Do you know where it is? Yeah, I do. And he said, okay, I'm going to go back. He went back four years later. Or it was like eight, a total of eight. He called me back and he, he was sort of in tears. And I, I this is, this is, I'm only going to give you a quick rundown. He said that, um, they'd found the body six feet from where he was. He said he was the stupid one. He did not do the 360 around the bush. And he kept going to the spot where he was standing there where he picked something up. And he said, I don't know why. He goes, maybe I was afraid of on the finality of knowing that my friend had perished from crashing from his parasailing. And I said, it happens. You know, sometimes we just can't you know, we just can't deal with it. Um, so that's that's why the dreams, the, the dream part is important because it filters or it buffers us facing these 
circumstances. I mean, there are good news sometimes. I mean, I found missing people alive, and and I tell people it's not always bad news, but you do have to face it, you know. So I I hope that that just gives you a general idea. Did I explain it properly to help people understand? Oh yeah, I think you did a real good job on that. I mean, yeah, I mean, a lot of people, you know, they love Johnson meat, you know, sausage or bacon or whatever. Just think of it this way. If you're looking for something or you want to create a dream, you ask like 10 questions. And I can help develop the questions. So, for example, do you have something you're looking for in the house? Me? That you lost? Yeah, that you lost. Yeah. Yeah, my motorcycle keys. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. I misplaced them while I'm on my last ride, and I, I've been tearing the house apart trying to find them. Okay, let me tell you what I see. All right, first, I'm, I'm not going to use the dowsing because I didn't, I wasn't prepared. So, you know, when you take an intermission, I may have to go grab a little pendulum. But, all right, so what you do, we're going to do two ways. First, you, you know, we talked about Johnson's bacon, okay, Johnson's sausage. You can't just say, I'm looking for a key. You have to write down your full name. You, you don't write down, I'm an idiot. You, you write down Gary Tombstone Anderson and say his motorcycle key, and you have to say the brand of the motorcycle. What's the brand of the motorcycle? Harley Davidson. So you, oh, thank you. That's nice. Okay, so you write, you write down <laughs> Harley Davidson. Now, do you own, now this is what people don't get. Do you own more than one Harley Davidson? Yes. You do? Yes. Well, that's amazing. I, I think people are going to be jealous listening to this. Okay, so here's the deal. Did the key belongs to a Harley Davidson that is a specific color, maybe? So let's try to isolate what kind of key we're looking for. Um, so tell me, do, do you have? Did you name your motorcycle? You know, everybody keeps saying, you know, I've been riding for forty some years, and everybody goes, "What what name do you call your bike?" I've, and I call it bike. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, okay, that I've, doesn't help. No, okay, I've ne- so I never named do, it. No. Okay, so let's do this. I can see the key, which means you can find it. Is it a smaller silver key? That's what I need to know. No, it has a key bob, which is black, then attached to a small key, which is part black and part chrome. Okay, so the first thing I saw was a key. The next thing I saw was an envelope. The next thing I see is something that is Teal in color, okay? So here's the deal. The key I'm seeing may not be the key to the bicycle, but it could be a key right near bicycle, I'm sorry, bike, you know, your, your, your Harley. Let's call it a Harley. But here's the thing is you have to write on your grocery list, I'm looking for, show me where my Harley um, motorcycle um, is located, uh, key is located. And then you have to write down, it's a key fob with a piece of chrome coming out of it, right? Correct? Right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, so this is what you have to do. So you have to write down who, when, where, what. Okay, so who is Gary Tombstone Anderson. I write down the address. So let's say it's on 123 Cary Street. And so you write down 123 Cary Street. Uh, let's say it's uh, Los Angeles, California. You have to write down the town name and say... Uh, you know, so it's your house. Say it's at my house. Do you own more than one house? No, we only have one house. That's because I bought two motorcycles. Okay, there you go. So what is the color of the two mo- motorcycles, the difference between the two? One is all black and the other one's all red. Okay, is it the red one that's missing? Uh, the black one. Okay, so you write down the, I'm looking for the key of the black Harley Davidson motorcycle that is missing. And when you say missing, you have to say, so, so who is you? What is the key to the black motorcycle? Um, when? So do you know when you lost the key maybe? Uh, last Wednesday of last week. Okay. So you say Wednesday and you write down a date, which, what was that? Was that closer? This is the 17th. So was that maybe uh, the 10th-ish? Time frame? Yeah, right around that. Yes. Okay, so you write down approximately the 10th, okay, and where do you think it's either in the garage or in the house? Uh, in the house somewhere. Okay, so we're going to go on the premise that we're not really sure, okay? 
And what happens is I did not have a dream about Harley Davidson key being missing. I'll tell you that right now. Um, I did have a dream about something else this afternoon because I wanted to rest because I knew that we're going to be I'm Eastern Standard and you're Pacific time. So I was like, okay, I really got to focus. Um, the first thing I saw that I thought was interesting, and, and this is what we want to pay attention to, is I kept seeing a blender. I kept seeing a stove. I kept seeing a fire. So my first impression is you have two places to look. A, in the kitchen, because normally your blender, your stove, your fire is all in the kitchen. Unless you have an outside fire pit. Do you have an outside fire pit? No. Uh Uh-uh. Okay. Okay. So we've eliminated that from the possibility. Okay. So if you're incubating a dream, which we'll go into that in a minute, because we'll talk about the Smithsonian Magazine that I'm written about in... And there's a reason for that is because I did the same process in order to find two missing objects for the writer of the Smithsonian Magazine. But for you, when I saw the key, I saw an envelope or two or three. Um, and I know the, the way I find stuff when it comes to missing, not missing persons, but missing objects, what I do is I look around for um, the colors around the missing object. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Okay. So we know we're looking for an envelope and I, I can't tell if it's a um, manila envelope and, but I'm going to say, put that in parentheses saying that's a possibility. I just saw something weird. I saw like a postcard and I thought it looked like Europe. So do you have any paperwork in your kitchen that's, um, mail that comes in. Do you go open your mail in your kitchen? I, I, I yeah. I, I, but I, when the mail comes, I, I, I get it from the mailbox, bring it into the house, and then I put it uh, in like this little uh, wood holder that we put our mail in. For, okay. For all the other I members of the family to go through it. What? For everybody else can go any, and pick out their mail. Okay. So the question is, do you have a? Do you have any? Newer envelopes there? Do you have any pictures of, um, you know, possibly a postcard of Europe, that kind of thing? Nothing like that. The only thing we got in is for for a camping chair uh, type of thing. It came in the last week or two. I don't see a camping chair. I'm seeing envelopes. So let's go with, instead of being on the floor or on the ground, and let's not say the table, I would say a little higher up. So my impression is go to where your mail is, um, go tear that area apart, go see if, if it was sitting there with the mail at one time, it could have fallen off the, um, the piece of furniture sitting there. Do you have any furniture in there that has colors? Like, um, does your wife buy Lily Pulitzer? She doesn't. No, but we got a lot of bird. My wife's really into like parrots and uh, cockatiels. So our dining room, instead of having a dining table, is like full of bird cages. So, oh my God, you're brave! All right, so <laughs> not really. I, I don't, I don't see a bird or a bird cage. So my first impression is go back to where envelopes might be, and I would lean toward probably your kitchen. And for some reason, the anything to do with colored teal. Now, the, the are the. Did you say you have uh, birds also? And what kind of birds? Uh, they're cockatoo and uh, parrots. Okay, um, you do have to think outside the box when trying to find a missing object. Um, and a lot of times, people instead of saying cockatoo, they'll say cockatiel. So I want you to think about this. It could be the wall that is next to where the cockatoo is located, um, but you have to know that you're looking for the envelopes. So stand there, do a 360, as goofy as it sounds, and keep looking for the key, but go very slowly and move the envelopes and see if somehow the key got, I don't know, covered up, uh, fell into one of the envelopes or near the envelopes. But it, it feels like it would be very, very close. And just suddenly I was shown an electrical plug. So another landmark, which and that's what I call it, is um, an electrical plug near where the key is. 
Okay. okay I'm going to write that down. 